So I watched a video recently on YouTube from the MMA content creator Keon Kimura. He typically is a nice dude. He seems like a chill guy. He normally does make videos that I don't disagree with, but his most recent video on his channel is getting a lot of traction. It was recommended to me. I watched it, and I must say, I have never disagreed with a video more in my entire life than this one. And as I was watching it, I was cringing. I felt disappointed in him as a content creator. I'll be honest, it's how I felt. And I was also immediately in my brain after everything that he said, formulating counter arguments that were logical against nearly every point that he had. And a lot of his comment section are disagreeing with him. I felt the same as them. And it's made me make this video because I can't just let this slide. You know what I mean? I can't just let it slide. I've got to make a response to it. And, uh... Yeah, let's get into it. Basically, the concept is MMA hot takes. As you can see on the screen, his fans send him in via the comment section a hot take that they have about MMA. And he says whether or not he agrees with it or not. And he took this to a whole nother level and ranted about it for eight minutes. So let's watch it and I'll give my counter arguments. Fighters. <sighs> I got to agree with this. And this is very apparent when we talk about Tyron Woodley former UFC welterweight champion. I want to give a take first, because it says he agrees with the fact that MMA fans are racist towards black fighters. I think that generalizes the whole MMA fan base, and that's so wrong to do. He also takes this, this to the point where he starts talking about the sport in general, being racist against black fighters, the UFC being racist against black fighters, and that's something I massively disagree with in this video. But I think... There are some fans, very few of them, but there are some fans who are racist against black fighters. There are black fans who are racist against white fighters. There are Dagestani fans, Muslim fans, who are in a certain way against people who aren't one of them. That's just how it is. And they're very small sections of the fan base, but they exist in all directions, is my take. And all it takes is to look at the comment section after one certain type of fighter beats another certain type of fighter. All it takes is to look into the comment sections. Trust me. And you'll find it in all directions. So to make this video to insinuate that it's all against black fighters, it's pathetic to me. And I think it's so wrong. But we'll keep going. And Let him cook. Because I'll be refu refuting a bunch of his statements. And a fighter who I think out of any fighter that's ever fought in the ufc has been very vocal about his mistreatment as a black mma fighter why when tyron woodley is mistreated is it him being mistreated as a black mma fighter why isn't it just tyron woodley being mistreated is israel adesanya mistreated no he's treated probably one of the best out of any of them on the roster right now. In fact, outside of McGregor when he comes back, I'd say Israel Adesanya is the best treated MMA fighter. Out of all of them, he's the second highest paid. John Jones might be up there as well, I'll be honest. Why is it when Tyron Woodley experiences mistreatment, is it mistreatment as a black fighter? But when Steve Miocic is one of the most disrespected champions by the company and the fan base, mainly by the company intrinsically itself, why isn't it Stipe is a white man being mistreated. Why isn't it just Stipe? Why is it just Stipe being mistreated? This is Tyron Woodley mis being mistreated. It's not him being mistreated as a black man. He's just being mistreated and happens to be black. And there are black fighters who aren't. And there are white fighters who are mistreated. And there are white fighters who aren't. Think about Volkanovski. The narratives they pushed against him during the whole Holloway saga. People tried to act like he lost the first fight. Let's not get into it. We keep going. There's so much more. Fighting for the UFC. And because of it, he received a lot of backlash. People right away were saying he's pulling out the race car. Because he was. He's trying to play victim. Because he was. This and that. And I think Tyron being so vocal about this is a big reason and a big example as to why I believe the MMA fan base could be a little racist because so because Tyron said it one person in the sport because he said it that's why Keon Kimura thinks it dangerous mindset to have but some people's brains are that way I guess we move on because 
for example, if this happened in other sports leagues, organizations such as the NBA, the NFL, the fan base will be more in tune with it. They will listen to it more, talk about it more, and actually give the athlete their time of day in regards to what they're trying to say, especially if it's about something like race. Tyron Woodley was given his time of day to say what he had to say. What he had to say was so wrong on so many levels. But in MMA, specifically the UFC, they just shut them down right away. And honestly, I feel like a lot about this is due to the fact that the UFC doesn't really make it a point to talk about it. They Because it doesn't exist. Keon Kimura is like attacking this issue as if it does exist from the get-go. Whereas there should be a question as to whether or not it does. Just because a black person says something doesn't mean it's 100% true and must be taken seriously at all levels. Like, and they don't do anything about it. Like, it was an accusation from one fighter and it was very quickly, quickly realized by the whole fan base that this dude's waffling. You know what I mean? This is mistreatment of him, not of him because of his skin color. But Keon Kamora is under the impression that because Woodley said it, it's true. And the UFC did nothing about it. This is why I like the UFC, because I don't listen to this bullshit. They like to shy away from things like this because it's too serious for them. Whether it was Tyron talking about race, they didn't want to talk about it as well. Because it was wrong and it's completely like baseless as a claim, completely. We had Dana talk about it at one point. He said, we're not a politically correct promotion. We don't deal with that kind of stuff here. When Joe Rogan said the N word on his podcast, the UFC didn't make a comment and see, that's the thing. I'm not even like, why do they need to, by the way, who made a comment? Who made a comment? Black man, Israel Adesanya, no problem with it whatsoever. So why does Dana White need to have a comment? Joe Rogan said the N-word on his podcast. In context, reading out, like he never called anyone it at all. He's 55, okay? Which isn't an excuse, but still he's 55. And ages ago on his podcast, he was saying it in context of that word being used. Whether he was reading it out on paper, as part of a quote someone said. You know what I mean? Like, so I bring that up as like, and we didn't talk about it. Yeah. Even trying to say we should cancel Joe Rogan. He should get fired from his job. But the UFC did very little to basically nothing in regards to making a statement about it. And because there was nothing to say. He didn't do anything. <laughs> and bringing awareness about it as to why it's wrong. And because the promotion doesn't do that, the fan base is going to follow along, at least most of them. So because the UFC didn't come out against the use of Joe Rogan reading the M word in context, the fan base is going to start saying the M word. <laughs> Dude, this is mad. This is a mad video and it gets so much worse. It gets so much worse, dude. I'm sorry, Keon, you fuck it up so bad. It gets so much worse. This is the base layer of it. Trust me, it gets worse. And they're going to say, you know what? You're right. This isn't a big deal. We shouldn't make it a big deal, but it is. And I think there's a dynamic that's been created. I want to read into that. Um, It is. You know what I say? Is it? You got to switch those words around when it comes to topics like this. That's a big thing that separates a conscious brain from a semi-conscious individual that just follows along. You hear something is accused and you say, because it is. Is it is the question. You've got to have an inquisitive mind. You've got to question it. You can't just take it as this is what it is and everyone must act accordingly to this accusation of something. You have to say, is it? Not it is. Simple wording that can change your thinking about things. Between the UFC and the fan base in regards to being a little racist. That's what I see personally. And 
look, there are, are a ton of examples I could bring up to this. I feel like here we go. One of the primary examples that people would bring up in the comments is that one of the most favorite favored fighters of all time or fan favorite fighters of all time is Anderson Silva, John Jones. People love these guys. And John Jones is a wife beater, a PED user, multiple times, cocaine user, crashed into a pregnant woman and ran off away from the scene while she was just like, just completely horrifically mangled in the front seat of her car. Like, and you just said it. He's one of the most favored fighters in the sport. John Jones. Anderson Silva seems like a nice guy. PED user. Just pointing that out again. But he's a nice guy. People like him because of that. You said it yourself, Keon. People like John Jones. If that... I, They have so many reasons not to, yet they still do. If that don't prove that there ain't none of that en masse in the sport, I don't know what does. They still like John Jones. They don't like Paddy Pimlet because he insulted Ariel Hawane. They like John Jones who beats his wife, cocaine crashes into pregnant woman, runs away from the scene with his cocaine, um, takes PEDs, cheats the system three times over, ruins entire events. They like John Jones. They don't like Pimlet because he said a mean thing about Ariel Hawane. That's the only example you should need. But that's the thing. Black MMA fighters are only able to get that recognition once they reach the highest of the highs <laughs> kevin holland Derek lewis terence mckinney mike perry the list goes on this just isn't the case you don't have to reach the level of an anderson silver or a john jones as a black mma fighter to get recognition from the fan base and to be liked by the fan base or loved by the fan base you just don't you just have to have a cool personality and people will like you. It's just how it's been. Kevin Holland's one of the most fan favorite fighters. People loved Terence McKinney. They wanted to see him do well. McKinney lost to Dober and the comment section was sucks for McKinney, man. I reckon he's still got it. I reckon he's going to get back on onto his game, get back to training. And I, I can see him making a comeback. There are so many examples of this. You know what I mean? Derek Lewis is beloved. He's never held a belt. He doesn't need to become GOAT status and defend his belt multiple times. Kevin Holland hasn't beaten a top 10 opponent. He's loved by all. I know recently he had a bad story, but let's say just a day before that bad story came out about him attacking Joseph Holmes. Um, if it is true, who knows? He's loved by everyone. Everyone loves Kevin Holland. So this is just incorrect. So John Jones, Anderson Silva had to be the very best for a very long time in order for them to get that respect. But even then, they still received disrespect and i'm not talking about john jones with all the things that he does outside of the cage i'm talking about the wife beaten the cocaine taken the crime doing pd using inside of it if he doesn't if he doesn't perform well in a fight people are going to turn on him same with anderson silva after that damian maya fight so many people hated on him same with Rose Namajunas after that Carla Esparza fight. Literally the entire sport changed up on her and insulted her beyond belief. Same with any fighter who stinks out the show with a terrible performance. They get hated on. Keon Kimura seems to be operating under the idea that because they're black, you must like them no matter what. I don't know, dude. He goes further with it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Keon, explain. And it just goes to show even just one minor mistake from these guys. Beating your wife, crashing into a pregnant woman and running off, taking PDs three times. One minor mistake. The fan base turns on them immediately. As they do with every fighter. And even... When a black fighter does reach these heights, such as a Demetrius Johnson and Kamaru Usman, those two guys still did not receive the recognition they deserved, in my opinion. DJ is because he's a midget. 
Suhudo never like got the same respect. Suhudo went beyond what DJ did. I know DJ had his multiple title defenses and his title defense record, but Suhudo moved up a weight class to try and sort of like escape that. Oh, you're just a flyweight thing. And literally, there was a comment. I remember this because I was laughing about it on stream. Like, after a win against Cruz or something, someone in a comment section with, like, a few hundred likes had, like, a post that said, like, still five foot four, though. And he's, like, a double champ, um, Olympic champ. Like, and people... It's just a small guy thing. And when it comes to Usman, he was boring as fuck. And guess when Usman earned respect? When he beat Masvidal by KO. When he had a great fight with Covington. Are you telling me that people disliked Coving uh, disliked Usman and liked Covington after Usman versus Covington for the belt? Is that what Keon Kamora is saying? It was all pro Usman. Everyone going crazy. Oh yes, I love that he KO'd Covington. That was ninety percent of the fan response. You know what I mean? I was screaming about back of the headshots, but still, Usman had dull fights, and when he started having more entertaining fights, people respected him way more. We move on though. And <laughs> the long stares is like he's having like a frenzied moment here. For Kamaru's case, he received a ton of hate that I thought was very unnecessary. He wasn't likable. He's clearly on the source. <laughs> he wasn't likable at all. You know, he cheats in fights. People hate him because of these things. They don't hate him because of his skin color. <laughs> so those are prime examples of fighters reaching the top black fighters reaching the top and not being recognized for it but then we also have an example like people call john jones to go over gsp dudes tested positive three different times like israel adesanya people loved him when he was on his come up people still love him now but no look we have examples like israel adesanya people loved him when he was on his come up but then when he became the champion started having some boring fights, boring performances, people started to hate him. Because of the boring fights and boring performances and the boob hanging off his chest. You're saying it yourself. You're self-admitting flaws within people that people should dislike and giving reasons for why people dislike people. And then you're just painting it all because they're black, I guess. Like, yes, people loved Adesanya during his rise. He had fun fights uh, up until getting the belt, and, and he took the belt off Whitaker. And guess what? The Romero fight was one of the worst fights in UFC history. The Vittori fight was dull. The Cannoneer fight was dull. So people disliked him. It's not like... It, this, this is almost like what Keon's saying. Adesanya was white when he was getting the belt. But then I guess he became black after getting it. So everyone disliked him. Like, so weird to have this take on it. But we move on to another part of this. It sounds very similar to George St. Pierre, in my opinion. But I have to admit, in comparison to the amount of negative feedback those two got, I think Israel received way more than George. Because for George, people easily forgot it. But people did call George St. Pierre boring, first of all. But I want to say this as well. The reason they received very different levels of hatred for their performances was because Israel Adesanya talks every single time he's about to fight like he's going to go out there and destroy someone. He's going to finish Romero and make the towers fall. And he makes that insensitive remark that a lot of Americans are going to feel a certain way about. And then he goes out there against Jared Cannonier and says, I'm just going to go in there and fuck him up. That's it. Star making performance. I'm going to go in there and mess him up. And then you play at range for five rounds and leg kick. GSP would say, I'm going to find a way to win. You know, he would just sort of like have that mindset of, I'm all about the martial arts. I have respect. Um, I'm just going to go out there and find a way to win, you know, and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to train really hard. And it wasn't like GSP was saying, I'm going to mess this guy up in one round and destroy him and do everything I can to destroy him. And then starts laying on them for five rounds. If it was that way, people would have hated GSP, but he was very humble in the build up to fights. He acknowledged the risk of his opponent. So his performances, although also quite boring at times, they matched his energy before the fight. Israel, Ad Israel Adesanya has 
the energy, I don't even know how to explain this, of year. He, Israel Desanya speaks like he fights like Yuri Prohaska, and Yuri Prohaska speaks like he fights like Israel Desanya. That's my perfect comparison there. But we move on, Keon. By his next fight, and we're looking forward to see him fight again. With Israel, people had deep anger and hatred for him. He grew a boob. He did a bunch of things that are weird. He had really dull. He had the worst fight maybe in UFC history against Yoel Romero. I've given the reasons why. Another example, Francis Ngannou. This guy being described for his power. Hits like a Ford F1 whatever. And he's a freak athlete. How come he can't be described as a smart fighter who's very technical? Because he wasn't until the Stipe rematch and the Garn fight. So that's all they had to go. He literally blitzed forward with his chin up in the air against Rosenstruik. Showed no technique whatsoever. And just clipped him and put him out with crazy power. So of course they're not going to talk about, wow, the fight IQ of Nganu to go out there and do that. After watching him sprint at Stipe Miocic for a whole round, gas himself out and get out fight IQ'd. You're not just going to lie and say that someone's something that they're not because they're black. Like, you just, you've got to be real and take the race out of it and just honestly analyze someone in the moment. And he goes on. Trains hard, knows the fundamentals well. We saw that in his fight against Cyril Ghosn. And when he did it to Cyril Ghosn, people in the comments, despite Nganu just laying on him and heavy breathing, despite that, people were like, wow, Francis got way more technical. He's got wrestling added into his game. His fight IQ is actually not that bad. You know what I mean? And people changed their, changed their tune. I don't know what world Keon's living in because it ain't the same world I am. All the comments after the Stipe rematch were like, wow, patient and Garnu is a different beast. He was so calculated. He waited for his moment. He didn't rush. He didn't rely on his power. He had good technique. Great takedown defense. Everyone changed their tune. What world is this guy in? How come that's not being spoken about? How come he has to be this freak show type of fighter in order for him to get promoted? Because he was in the first place and that gets him promoted. People like the freak show over the technical fighter and that's who Nganu was. So should we not promote Nganu? It's who Nganu is. It's not bad to say that because he's black. It's not bad to say Nganu has one punch power and crazy power. And by the way, this was all being used to promote Nganu in front of Stipe at a press conference who got no praise whatsoever. Let's talk about that. When was all of this promotion being done? In the build-up to the first fight with Stipe, where Stipe got no love from the UFC and they put all their promotion into Nganu because they wanted him to beat Stipe and he messed it up. He messed that up for the UFC. They wanted him to beat Stipe. They wanted rid of Stipe Miocic. Everyone overlooked Stipe in that fight. Every single person. He got no promotion. And they were literally talking about Ford Escort and all of this. And he's crazy and he's this and that. In front of Stipe who was just sitting there like, Oh, okay, sure. At a press conference listening to him talk about it. You know? And then the moment he starts talking back to the UFC in regards to... I want fair rights for fighters and fair pay for fighters. The UFC paints him as a diva. Not because he's black. Because he's going against the UFC. And this is what they do. And they're doing the same for Paulo Costa. And it's nothing to do with skin color. It's to do with their actions. And just because they're black doesn't mean that everything that happens to him that's bad is because of that. Like, it's mad, this video. Mad. Mad, mad video. The moment he starts trash-talking, or just talking back, it's, oh, he's cocky, he's arrogant. People loved the trash-talking the build-up to the fucking Stipe fight. They loved it. They were all over in Ghana. Only once he lost did people turn on him about the trash-talk. Only once he lost. They loved the bit of trash-talk that he had with Cyril Ghan. Meanwhile, if a white fighter does it, oh, like he's talking Pinlet? back. He's courageous. What an no. alpha male this guy is. 
Not like Paddy Pimlet, no. Nah. So not the white fighter then. Because people hated Conor McGregor on the build-up, did they not? Have you ever seen a video of every single fighter picking against McGregor the entire way during his rise? People saying, no way he wins this one. No way he wins that one. No way he wins this one. All talk. People think about McGregor as like, you probably weren't even there during his rise, it sounds like. Because everyone was against McGregor during his rise. Were people for McGregor when he was trash-talking Habib? When he lost? No. People massively against him. All of a sudden, McGregor's all talk. Nothing but uh, just an idiot. A moron. Loud mouth. And everyone was pro-Habib being humble. That's how it was. It's not this way, Keon. You've messed this up so bad, man. And another example of... People hated Bisping. People didn't like Chael Sonnen. They didn't like those pe people. Fucking hated Bisping. It's only once his career was over did people think, oh, you know what? Bisping actually brought a lot of attention to the sport. I respect what he brought to the game. You know what I mean? But during his rise, Bisping was public enemy number one. Number one. That's just how it was. You know what I mean? There's a subtle art to it, and some people can and some people can't. People loved Covington. Did they? When he first started doing his shtick, the whole MMA world hated him. I was one of the only ones that were like, you know what? He's trying to promote himself. He's building attention for the fight. I don't mind it. But everyone was against Covington. They couldn't wait to see him lose. And as soon as they did, they as soon as he did, they rejoiced. They cheered RDA walking out at the arena to Covington. They boo Covington. They cheer whoever's fighting Covington. This is not what it is, Keon. You're so off. Well, of this trash talking is Leon Edwards and Darren Till. Two very similar fighters, it's both strikers, both from England. One is white, one is black, and the white guy was always talking a lot of trash. Leon was actually very respectful, but look at the trajectory of both of their careers. Leon wasn't respectful to Darren Till. They trash talked to each other at a press conference. They just did. Like Leon called him out at the press conference. And that's how the trash talking started. Look how much more fame Darren received in comparison to Leon. Because Darren was hilarious. And at the time when they were trash talking each other back and forth, Leon hadn't even got his split decision win over Gunn and Elson yet. In that dull fight, and Till would come off a massive win against Cerrone and he'd been hilarious and he'd done his whole thing with Mike Perry about like fuckmikeperry.com and all this. And that's why he became such a big star. It's not race. It's not. There's so many other intricacies to people other than their skin color, Kion Kimura. I can't believe I'm explaining this to you. And Leon, look at him now. Everyone loves him. Che cheering. As much as people say I was rooting against Usman and I cheered for Usman's demise, I also cheered for Leon's win. Leon's a cool dude. People love Leon. He, gets, he got cheered in Salt Lake City as he walked out. He did. People loved his post-fight interview. They love Leon now. His post-fight interview nearly got 5 million views. He'd become a star. Whatever, though. Leon didn't even receive any of that respect until he became the champion. Because he didn't fight for like two and a half years. <laughs> he weren't in the cage for two and a half years. You know? He wasn't in the cage for two and a half years. And he didn't have great performances. And are we saying this about Arnold Allen? Arnold Allen is the same as Leon Edwards. But he's white. So I guess it's just not happening to Arnold Allen. Fights ending, unfortunately. Not the best of entertaining performances. Having to win 10 in a row before you even get an ounce of respect. Arnold Allen's walking the exact same path as Leon Edwards. Where's the racism? Why well, I, I don't get it. So, trash talking for black MMA fighters never goes well for them that's just a thing Derek lewis trash talks and everyone loves it if you're bad at trash talking you're bad at trash talking dude israel adesanya said frozen like elsa as a 33 year old man at a press conference in the build-up of a fight that's not because he's black it's because he's corny as fuck dude he is corny and he's not cool and that's why people didn't like it. And people still love Israel Adesanya. I'm not talking about everyone being against it, but some people are allowed to find Israel Adesanya as a personality 
cringe and annoying. And it's not because of race. Derek Lewis is great at press conferences. You know what I mean? But whatever, Kion. Another example. Aljamain Sterling. The guy is basically forced to be a villain. Even though he really didn't do anything wrong. He flopped around on the canvas, threw the belt away when he was in the ring or the cage. And then just moments later, when he got out, he starts taking pictures with it and partying with the belt over his shoulders. He made himself the villain. That's the move. Covington did nothing wrong. He made himself the villain because he wasn't getting any attention. Covington did nothing wrong to not get any attention. He just grinded his way up, but he made himself the villain and all of a sudden got a bit more attention. Same thing with Aljamain Sterling. This is a guy I loved on his come up, beating everyone in his way very impressively that win against Corey Sandhagen. I thought, man, this guy deserves all the recognition in the world. But the only way he was able to get that was for him to become the villain. When the disqualification wasn't his fault whatsoever. But it still happened. He was the first champion in UFC history to win by disqualification. You're not going to be considered a champion. If you get kneed in the face, KO'd, flop around on the canvas crying, and that's how you get your belt in a, in a fight you were losing. And in the second fight, he wins it. People think it's controversial. It was a very close fight. Um, I think Aljo won. But Piotian's entire team isn't there with him for the fight because of all the situations that were going on around the world and his team couldn't even get into the country. And that's something against Yan. And that takes away from Aljo's win. And then Dillashaw's arm pops out in the middle of their fight and he comes in with one arm. So he's not going to get full credit there. This isn't racism. It's an unlucky champion. And then he beats Piotr for a second time. People are like, Piotr should have won that. Beats TJ Dillashaw. Beats Piotr for the second time and people were like, Piotr should have won that. That's racism to Kion Kimura. What about when Holloway fans did the same thing about the Volkanovski fight? Even though Volk full well could have won that second fight, I still think he did. And he clearly won the first. He didn't get kneed in the face. Yet Volk got treated way worse than Aljo, if not equally as bad. By the fan base. People hated Volk. They wanted to see him lose. He had to dominate Holloway for five rounds in a trilogy when he was 2-1, 2-0 up. He was 2-0 up. He had to dominate a trilogy to get respect. Same situation. I guess Volk, Volkanovski must be black. TJ oh. was injured. There's no winning for Aljamain Sterling. And that's the racism of MMA fans, or is that just an unfortunate sequence of events? So, he is a prime example, in my opinion, of black fighters have a hard time becoming the hero in this sport. John Jones beat his wife, and he's considered a hero. They moved the whole event for John Jones. You started don't even test John Jones. Dude's failed three PED tests. They still let him fight for championship belts on his return. John Jones is what? It's very easy for their mistakes to get to the top in front of everyone's eyes for the MMA fan base. Because he beat his wife. Jones beat his wife and everyone loves him. John Jones takes PEDs, tests positive for PEDs in a fight against DC, where he KO'd DC. People fucking love him. They don't give a fuck about that, and they still call him the GOAT. Dillashaw tests positive for PEDs against Cejudo in a fight that he lost. People diminish his entire legacy. He doesn't have a legacy to MMA fans. John Jones does, and he's still considered by many the GOAT. It's just, it's the opposite. I hate to say it, but it's kind of the opposite. I feel like they're babied in comparison to white MMA fighters. Paddy Pimlet insulted Ariel Hawane. And he has got more hatred than John Jones got for beating his fucking wife to a bloody mess. That's a fact, dude. That's a fact. Pimlet robbed Gordon. Jones robbed Reyes. There's a difference in reactions to both. Especially from the organization. Joe Rogan said after Jones robbed Reyes, the second, the last two rounds should be worth more than the first three. Acknowledging that Reyes should have won 48-47, but still saying he sees it as a Jones win. 
He publicly came out and said that Pimlet should have lost. What are we doing here, man? And it's just not fair. And it really makes me wish that Dana White was more passionate in defending this like he was in defending fighter pay. And I know already a lot of people are going to be like, man, you're wrong. You're trying to make something out of nothing. This is how I see it. And if you disagree, I'd like to see your reasons down below. The next... Like and subscribe. <laughs> he goes to Pavlovich after all of that rant. See you later. Thank you for tuning in. Just needed to talk about that because it's just stressing me. Had to make a video about it.